Okay, so I'll um, briefly go over the recommendations. Um, so we are group, group one, the red dot group, um, examining the status of the existing observing system. And so this is a, oops, a summary of our recommendations. We have 14, um, and I, I guess I'll just read them. You can read along with me, and if you have any questions, Peter will be more than happy to answer your questions. Um, so increased coverage in Eurasian sector with respect to observations and data access. Um, that's encouraging and promoting activities within <coughs> Russia um, and also enabling uh, collaborations uh, with, with Russia and, and other countries and the rest of Eurasia. So some examples, Interact, GTNP, Russian-German collaboration on Laptop C. Recommendation two. Um, uh, minimize the, the red tape, the administrative barriers, conducting research in on both the Arctic waters on the land and in the airspace, um, of course, while respecting local communities. Um, so recommendation three is about ensuring the, the continuity um, and the development of remote sensing. Um, uh, so, uh, and its recommendations to ground-based observations. Um, in addition, one of the ideas that we had uh, was um, to localize remote sensing so that if we have small, uh, small drones or unmanned aerial vehicles that a local community can use um, to, can request um, in order to deploy over a local area of interest and to get a survey of that area as opposed to relying on um, satellite, sort of global satellite data. Uh, there's a recommendation to, um, to understand better about which observational and spatial time scales are most important and have the most impact. Um, for example, seasonal, multi-year, long-term time scales um, in order to focus efforts on, on those uh, time scales and spatial scales. Uh, sorry. Shouldn't edit while I type, but all right. Um, sustain and strengthen uh, multi-purpose flagship platforms. Um, use those as templates and extend them to become super sites. Um, in addition, increase coverage uh, through a diversity of different types of sites. And this is really thinking about the different scale of sites, large, medium, local scale, and including community-based monitoring. Um, we wanted to integrate industry, you know, which we felt uh, was it's not well represented um, for data capture and dissemination. So promoting development and adoption of modern technologies. Um, so that's sort of br bringing the, um, uh, the observation systems up to the modern day, um, but uh, while also respecting um, that, we are, that we don't drop um, our, existing, our existing instruments um, before those are ready so that we keep a, a continuous time series and spatial seri series of data. So we wanted to work towards free and open access Arctic data and metadata um, as soon as the data are QC'd. So we had a lot of discussion on this point um, and recognize that there is another data group. So we'll let them take it from there. Thought that a lot of stakeholders were missing here. Um, uh, for, in, for instance, industry, communities, Russia, social sciences, government agencies, et cetera, um, and to include those at the next AOS. Um, so we're assembling an international group. This is recommendation 10. Assemble an international group funded to design a comprehensive system for Arctic observations. Um, There's a mandate to influence long-term funding and infrastructure investments, which we felt were missing. So again, uh, using a combined broad set of stakeholders, um, establish a set of questions uh, that, uh, that the mature Arctic observing system must address. And then just three more. Um, so we felt that the stakeholder, the entire stakeholder community um, should be uh, uh, brought in and we should, could, should communicate throughout um, the development, starting with the development of the questions that drive the Arctic observing system. Um, the definition of the applications, the gathering of the data, and the dissemination of that data. Um, and uh, the point was made uh, strongly that um, this the stakeholders are not necessarily distinct from the information um, providers and the analyzers, and that often groups um, span uh, two or three of those categories. Um, so recommendation 13 uh, required some, some more wordsmithing, which we didn't have time to do. Um, but. 
uh, within the within the context of the previous recommendation, um, wanted to focus um, to focus on applications, um, and with those applications in mind, um, focus on system design. Um, uh, so identifying the requirements, um, the observing capabilities, um, and identify the the gaps. So uh, so that we're able to make recommendations for addressing the gaps. Um, and then uh, again, getting back to the stakeholder, the broad stakeholder community. Um, so develop develop this jointly with all of our stakeholders. Um, uh, so community, industry, general public, not not just the science side mandating what should be done. Um, and finally, uh, create so create a platform where um, all of this information come to vet, can uh, can be collected, um, where it can potentially be developed into data products. Um, not just raw data um, as necessary for specific users and redistributed. Um, and we thought that um, we needed a forum for further dialogue on how that should happen. So those are the recommendations from group one. Thank you. Any, uh, did we get anything? It was pretty extensive. Questions? All right. Thanks. Um, yesterday I said I could start with eight and go up to one, but one really wanted to go first again today. But uh, I also told two that he would have 20 minutes to work on his report, so I don't know if uh, David wants to go right away or we can start with Jackie if you want. Yeah, okay, so we'll start with eight and go up to two. Three minutes? Three or four. Three or yeah, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People just, you know, they, they want to get this. They want to stay here till they seven. They want to stay yeah. here till six. All right, so we started out with, uh, um, you know, we, we talked, had some discussions about the scales of the stakeholders from local community industry, science, policy makers, resource managers. And basically, we went through a variety of discussions on um, the, the capabilities, uh, how to do seasonal, uh, the seasonal prediction, how to da get data streams um, from stakeholders. Uh, ranging from hunters up to uh, the different uh, different user groups and get them into a, a data stream. Uh, we had discussions about the need for data to be relevant to local communities as well as uh, up to northern communities, for example, uh, as well as up to government agencies and to what the different user groups f were for that. We then had, uh, we talked about the different levels of data, that there's, there's the data producers, there's the, the intermediator, and that there are also the uh, the, lar the higher scales. So we went down to, um, did I pull one? Yes. Because I want to expand to develop into expanding what we did in our tasking. So yesterday we talked about our spatial data planning exercise, but we actually had the need for developing some type of destruct structure to connect the different level and types of data. That in fact data, it's a continuum that we need to have data brought forward into archives, but we need to also have it as a mode of communications, and that we need some format to have a framework to bring this forward under the observing systems. We also needed to develop tools as a platform for generating standardized uh, metadata to at least encourage a best, best practice and to facilitate that. And when we had uh, discussions about the mechanisms for submitting data sets, that the observing this platform would not be where you would submit the data sets necessarily, but it would be where there would be some description of the different observing systems, describing them, where they're located, and then they would be then linked, as I said, as the routes to uh, back to wherever those data portals would be. Um, but we also had a discussion that there might be uh, a development over time about having some research space where you could actually be making it more user-friendly for putting data sets, and this may be initially in, uh, nationally organized where you could put data sets in, work with other observing systems in the region, and that actually what would come out of that would be a standardized metadata format. So we didn't want, want to add any, we're trying to streamline um, the, the data entry and the facilitating into a, into a data archive. So we had three levels of within the submitting data. They had the information providers was a le one level, but that we are missing. And then the, the other level is that you have the observing system developers, the decision makers who want to use data coming from those observing systems. But in between, you need a translator. You need the landscape, seascape ecologist, the modeler, somebody who actually was wired to push that data into data products that then they would be usable for the different level. And this isn't levels one, two, and three. It could well be the triangle 
on that. But we need to develop some type of st structure connected to connect those levels. The recommendation that, you know, on this continuum that they actually have connection between the data cell centers to actually develop a streamlined data submission for the observing system to cross platform uh, and then to have the ability to put a flag on that data set that says this is part of the observing system. Um, let's see. The task two or, or recommendation two is that we needed to stand up that developing best practice do data document I mentioned yesterday and that this would be explicit to include the, the community levels that we would prepare that draft, as I said yesterday, to Helsinki. But one of the things that we also brought forward, too, is that IAS has just finished developing and venting through at least a couple hundred people through the working groups, the data guidelines for best practices. It's not a requirement, but there's agreement by these, the 23 countries within the IAS community, and that we should at least the, say the, uh, the observing community should just be, be looking at that, providing, uh, using that as a possibility of either adopting it or giving recommendations back, but that we shouldn't be starting from, from ground zero on that. That a third one was to look at case studies of success for science stakeholder at various scales to develop the guideline, that we should actually develop a guideline for the science stakeholder engagement. So something that then, then could provide some criteria so if you're evaluating an observing system, you could be looking at that. Uh, we wanted to look at, uh, that we should be looking at examples such as industry connections between science that Canada and Norway is doing. Look at science industry, local community uh, engagement success stories. And the result would be task four, which is to develop a best practice guidelines for how to have that science industry community engagement. Part of that would be then, in order for that to happen, would be requirement at the government level that in order to, for example, have certain permitting, you need to have that engagement as part of your, uh, uh, of your activities within industry. So those were the four recommendations. Thanks, Jackie. Any compliments or questions or from the group? No, oh, thank you. So group number seven. Okay, group seven was um, supposed to look at things from the perspective of the funders, and most of us aren't funders, so um, our main recommendation was to print more money or to uh, find gold somewhere or something. But, um, but the big one, coordinate international funding efforts. Uh, so all of you out there, go out and do that. It's really easy. Um, what we mentioned yesterday, and we kind of expanded on this today, is that um, uh, we recognize that, that the Arctic is a critically important region of the entire global system and that um, we recommend to help recognize this that the workshop findings include a policy statement and, and this is all kind of rough, but basically to integrate the Arctic into all of the existing global research programs and this goes into the whole alphabet soup of GEO, WMO, GOOS, GCOS, GTOS, blah, 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 in order to facilitate access to more sustainable funding build on existing frameworks and resources, and enhance the dialogue between scientists and stakeholders and users. So the concept is preserve the Arctic as its own unique region, but make sure it's, it's well known in the context of all these other global systems. Um, I think yesterday we had uh, suggested um, that SAN should develop a comprehensive inventory of the current status of, of sustained assets and networks and observation variables, and I think um, maybe Martin, somebody said we've done it already. Um, but a lot of that is just the current list of, oh. Volker. <laughs> oh, Volker did, that's it. Said we've done it. But it's, um, a lot of it is just a list of national uh, reports in that they need to be better integrated and synthesized to get a better picture of really um, what's out there um, and all the variables that are supported by all of these networks. Um, from a funding level, we recommended strongly that SEAN should engage non-Arctic countries in Arctic observing activities. Um, the needs are so great that we need global resources, funding, intellectual resources, infrastructure resources. We can't just rely on Arctic nations and Arctic resources only. And then lastly, um, we talked a lot about how to engage stakeholders, um, and especially from a, from a funding level, um, from that perspective, and how SAN 
um, can foster a two-way dialogue, communication channel, primarily to support the alignment of priorities between stakeholder needs and then observing requirements. And then between those observing requirements and the priorities of groups like the Arctic Council and other major um, international organizations such as IMO, the World Ocean Council, and others. So we really believed um, that SEAN should look really strongly at um, creating some kind of a stakeholder forum. Um, and, uh, and through this, it's really important to recognize that um, there are a lot of stakeholders that really don't have the resources to be involved, um, but they still need to be involved in this process and their needs recognized and incorporated. That's it. Thank you very much. Any questions? None, great. No. <laughs> Number six, thank you. Okay, so I'm sort of reporting back um, pretty much on the activities we discussed in, in session three. Um, and for this exercise, we sort of divided our group into three separate groups that discussed issues at the local, regional, and, and global scales. So uh, really what I'm presenting now is, is just a few threads that you can find across all of those notes. So. There's sort of explicit examples that could be incorporated into recommendations um, under each of these. And of course, our group uh, really approached the, uh, the problem from the, the perspective of a, of a stakeholder. Okay, so uh, the, the sort of the, the four main threads that, uh, that, that sort of prevailed across these three scales uh, basically uh, highlight the need for improved uh, capacities for, for communication um, such things as liaison with, with local communities, uh, talking about or establishing standards, uh, creating a methodological database uh, for people to sort of learn and, and find out how other people are making uh, similar measurements, the use of mobile technologies, et cetera. Um, and the other point, uh, again, uh, this is specific at different sort of spatial uh, or temporal scales, as, 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 you, as you can imagine, is the, the need uh, for synthetic activities uh, that really could be used to test the robustness and the sensitivity of the observing system and uh, also produce end products that sort of highlight successes of, of the observing network to date and, of course, are useful to a variety of stakeholders that have quite different interests from the local to, to the global scale. Um, the other thing we, we talked about was the need for forecasting and planning of uh, things like uh, shipping activities, field and other activities, whereby leveraging of uh, logistics and observation effort uh, could, could be maximised. And I think like other groups, uh, we really want to encourage uh, Scion and, and many other organisations that are creating things that are probably best described as, as portals, in other words, cyber infrastructure that documents uh, a range of observing activities that are going on, um, but also encourage them to expand that to reporting observations of change or no change, um, uh, making baseline data sets uh, more easily available. Um, and also making the products of synthetic activities um, more available. And once again, you can imagine how that there's, the solution here is not one portal or a one-stop shop. Uh, there's a variety of different needs at different, different scales here that will really only be met through the development of, of, of multiple portals. So whatever gets designed there, the, the focus on interoperability um, and consideration of a decentralized data information system will be really quite key, key to achieving that. But again, uh, whoever the lucky person is to write the recommendations for the report, uh, they'll, hopefully they'll find a lot of explicit, more explicit examples for, for some of these scales that we've been talking about. Thanks a lot. I'm sorry, I, I really sort of ad-libbed on a lot of stuff our group discussed. So if I missed or any key points, can you, someone from the group really sort of pull me up on that? Okay, I'll probably hear about it in the bar. Later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Reporter number, f group number five. 
And, and I was also told by Lise Marie that Rapporta, you should keep your USB stick for tomorrow. So don't bring him back. She doesn't want him. <laughs> this on? Oh, yeah. If you want okay. to be standing, I think it's no problem. I don't have a computer to hide behind, so. Okay. Uh, uh, in group five, we considered uh, stakeholder perspectives. Um, we didn't have uh, uh, representative stakeholders from uh, the Arctic resident group uh, in our group uh, to participate in the discussion, uh, but uh, we had two recommendations, which are basically exactly what Molly said, Molly Kamen. Um, first one is that um, for the next meeting in Finland, uh, we very much need to have a description of just what the Arctic Observing System is. Um, we need a, uh, it can be clear and short and simple, but we, we need that uh, um, in order to uh, uh, take our dis discussions further. The second thing we need uh, is a, uh, a uh, stakeholder advisory board, stakeholder, stakeholder forum, whatever, um, to uh, make sure that, that uh, the stakeholders' opinions are included in uh, discussions about development of the system um, in the future. Um, we got an email in the middle of our discussions about uh, how to do this, and, and one of the recommendations was that we uh, make specific recommendations about what should be say on tasks. Um, either of these uh, recommendations could be say on tasks, or perhaps they could be ISAC tasks, uh, but uh, uh, I think we need both. Um, stakeholder forum and a, uh, a single description of, of what the what the observing system is. Any questions? Comments? Thank you. Uh, group number four, please. Dead, you're dying, or power or projector? Uh, neither. Projector. <laughs> I borrowed this computer. Careful because it's going to fall off if you leave it on the other one. It's not yours. There we go. Great. All right. All right. Um, I'm going to be brief. We uh, we ended up with uh, a very rich discussion that yielded uh, six bullet points, and one of which is a conceptual matrix that uh, Mike Gill's going to describe to you. But um, the main points that we discussed was first just to identify what's the need. And uh, we decided that that is understanding and responding to significant change that's outside the normal bounds of the human and natural systems. And then we decided that we needed to be very clear on the part of the design principle for an observing system that we need to make a decision about how the Arctic is defined. Um, and then we needed to discuss or to conduct a, a stakeholder needs assessment, and this would help us identify who these stakeholders are and uh, help us to establish a baseline of need. And then to identify priorities above, um, among the above identified needs and also identify the science capacity to address them. And uh, that we needed a management and coordination function to carry recommendations forward. But we had a really wonderful discussion on the conceptual matrix that uh, Mike is going to explain to you very clearly. <laughs> yeah, I sort of drew the short end of the stick on this one. So uh, what, what we began to talk about yesterday was, uh, you know, what's the glue or what's the unifying principle by which we can connect 
all our various observing efforts and disciplines and so forth. And the global community, like WMO, and it was mentioned on the first day, of, has developed things such as essential climate variables. So what are these core things that we really need to measure? There's other things you want to measure, but at any specific site, these are the core ones that you need to do. And uh, we recently published essential biodiversity variables, and there's others. And to me and to all of us, we felt pretty strongly that uh, in, in guiding the design or improved design of Arctic Observing Network, you need to agree at least on what some of those core essential variables are. Um, and that's no small task, but we can sort of build on what's been done at the global level. And by doing that, you then can be aligned what we do in the Arctic to global efforts as well and scale through that. So then we just said, started discussing this idea of a relational database, which uh, actually Craig Tweedy just mentioned, might not be quite the same uh, thought. But the idea here was, uh, well, if we're going to improve our Arctic observing design, we have to figure out just how bad it is. And so if you start to define what those core variables are uh, and build a relational database around that, you can then start to uh, look over time and space scales to actually populate as cubes, and I'll try and make this work, uh, essentially basically build like a four-dimensional relational database where you can start to populate what networks we have, what are they measuring, how well they cover these various variables in time and space scales, and so then you can actually use that as a, a gap analysis, uh, and also you can map it to your stakeholder needs. So we decided that at the broadest scale, stakeholder needs really, everybody's stakeholder need is they're trying to understand significant change. And so, but of course, you can piece that into all sorts of different aspects, uh, whether you're a local community member, a scientist, a national government, and depending where you are in the Arctic. So the idea behind this matrix, if I am explaining it all clearly, is to build a relational database that maps out our effort based on these variables, based on time scales, seasonality, uh, multi-decadal, uh, spatial scales, and maps that as well to our stakeholder needs as much as possible. And then we can start to use that to identify where are the key gaps. And we can have that discussion about what are the priority gaps, so which cube, if you want, is the right gap. Now, so this is the concept. How to actually do this could be quite challenging, and we did acknowledge that this might, this is kind of a reductionist approach that wor works quite well for scientific monitoring networks, uh, but we felt that we might need to modify this to some degree to build in and make it work properly uh, when you start to build in traditional and ecological knowledge into the system. But this is the, the idea behind this, is we can use this as a, as a dynamic data system, uh, a metadata system that you can actually assess our current observing effort, identify the priority gaps, and come to some agreement. So, and jump in group if you thought that was a total misrepresentation of what we, okay, I got it, all right, good. There's Carolina, Carolina. okay, yeah, help me out, Carolina. Yeah, well said. Said much better than I did. So that's uh, that's it. And Susan, did you have more to? That was pretty much covers this, I think. So I'll just pull this off. And thanks to Lee for making that uh, very dynamic PowerPoint of the major. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Rapporteur number three, numéro three, sorry, number three, sorry, I'm losing my English. <laughs> <Sorry. Pardon. laughs> Oh, good. The brain goes in English. I've been um, designated to take the heat, so can I plug this in? Yeah, but it will slide off, so just... Oh, it's a, it's a Mac. I'll just read them. I know, but I don't have a Mac cable. Oh, I think I have Oh, one you. so <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> 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 Uh, I think he just threw it out on the floor. Oh. 
much. I, I confess as I'm doing this that I felt <coughs> really um, confused through most of our discussion, but I blame that on um, me. <laughs> So these are some recommendations in no particular order of importance, and some of them may not even be recommendations. They may be more sort of um, um, comments or things that we think that need to be included. We had a really wide-ranging discussion um, that included a bunch of data discussion that I've tried to capture in some sort of articulate way. Olivia and I have tried to do that, and also our third, we had three rapporteurs off and on. So one of the things uh, we talked about was um, uh, the seasonality of data. And so the first recommendation, or number one, is that we undertake a focused effort to determine where and what kind of physical or biological observations are needed all year round recognizing that there's a bias in summer observations so that people can argue for the funding of those activities. I uh, recommend that prior to the next AOS, we examine ways in which community-based observing programs can make better use of or and or obtain improved access to technologies that will facilitate their local observing programs and aid in linking these community observing programs to one another to facilitate pan-Arctic observation and ultimately upscaling of the information that comes in um, Recommendation that uh, synthesis of observing information conduct be conducted prior to subsequent AOS so that prioritization of observing needs is simplified and informed by the most current understanding of the state of the system. So some synthesis papers in advance of the AOS. Uh, recommend that SAN work on behalf of improved access to infrastructure and field stations and data streams. This means arguing for funding support so that people can actually travel to the research infrastructure. There are instances where people have money to do the work, but no money to actually get to the place that they need to get to to do the work. Um, so um, simplifying, and also things like simplifying red tape. So for example, um, making it easier to fly glaciers that span two countries without having to go through immigration every time you do that. A uh, recommendation that um, funding agencies at the national level take on the task of package funding projects and programs and the various assorted components of an observing program. So what this really means is coordination amongst agencies that fund Arctic activities um, so that people that are engaged in doing Arctic research can submit a single application even though it may be funded by multiple agencies within a particular country. Um, uh, recommend, I, I don't necessarily feel comfortable, I, this, anyway, recommendation that the AOS consider what data management looks like and what elements does it need to have and why it matters. Without this, it is difficult to speak to the funding agencies about way in which the data from various observing initiatives will be managed, used, and disseminated. An inventory of inventories and data archives, this should be a continuous activity. We are aware that inventories have been collected as part of the SEON process. We are aware that ICC is conducting an inventory of CBM activities that includes the type of activity and the nature of information being collected. The key point here is that this is a continuous process um, because inventories are always changing and the information that's being collected is always changing. Um, recommend, and this is already clearly going on, but recommend that research and observing activities are designed in collaboration with Arctic communities in order to avoid duplication of effort and over-observing in some communities and under-observing in others. We did have a discussion about CBM fatigue and research fatigue in certain communities that experience a lot of um, inflow of researchers from the outside. Uh, recommend, this is a great one, that the unfunded mandates of the Arctic states are turned into funded activities that are stable over time. So for example, finding a revenue flow by charging commercial ventures in the Arctic to support observing systems that will enable the Arctic countries to carry out their obligations with respect to things such as search and rescue and oil spill recovery. And clearly that's operating at a much higher level than we are, but it is something we talked about quite a bit. Um, recommend that the working groups from the Arctic Council participate in these activities um, and provide input on observing needs to better inform what needs to happen with observing infrastructure. Uh, recommend that through the AOS we develop, and I believe one other group mentioned this, I don't remember which one it was, Jackie's group, that we need some kind of best practices guidance for community and stakeholder engagement 
and, and that we evaluate the extent to which observing programs that currently exist and involve this kind of engagement are successful um, across the spectrum of definitions of what success might be. Uh, I recommend that in advance of the next AOS, we work to engage Russian participation at multiple scales, so not just the scientific community, but also stakeholder community and industry, and that we build off the success of existing networks such as Interact and others that have already, um, that are already doing this. Um, recommend, and this speaks to the stakeholder communities outside of the Arctic, these last, um, this, this point here, recommend that the AOS or some entity engaged with the AOS, whether it's ISAC or SAN or whoever, develop some kind of annual reporting mechanism that takes the information or, or data flowing from the observing system and turns it into accessible information that is meaning to, meaningful to distant stakeholders. For example, the general public in non-Arctic countries, the government agencies in non-Arctic countries that are interested in the impacts of Arctic change and that kind of thing. Um, uh, recommend that we <coughs> continue to build on existing infrastructure by encouraging new and novel use of platforms by a wider range of scientists. This will require an inventory, and this is the action item, of what facilities are available at what locations. In, I mean, those people that work in facilities know what's there, but if it's not part of your bailiwick, it's not necessarily easily accessible information, and you may not realize that some terrestrial facility has infrastructure that you might use for your activities. And finally, uh, recommend we improve engagement with the private sector, for example, perhaps through focused um, meetings in advance of the AO next AOS that address how observations being collected by the private sector can be accessed, used, and archived for a wide variety of purposes. And the specific example we discussed in our working group was the bathymetric data that's being collected by a lot of tourist cruise ships and how that can be made um, accessible and available to the scientific community that might be interested in it. So some kind of pre-summit dialogue that would have um, enabled needs to happen. And that's it. Thank you. So I guess we're down to number two, the last one. Okay, finish up here. So data group number two, uh, we'll just move through this fairly quickly. So looking at stakeholder issues, so we, we started off by uh, discussing specific stakeholder issues sort of from the uh, oceanic, marine, and terrestrial environments. And so we uh, arrived at several examples. I, we're not gonna go through them all here, but we'll summarize them in the actual document. Um, one of the things we wanted to do was uh, provide examples that uh, other users could potentially take up as uh, templates. Uh, one point that's probably useful to mention is that end users may be willing to pay for services. So a lot of the, the physical sciences can often provide services that may be of use to companies that can actually afford to, to pay good money for this. That's a, that was a good point. Um, one of the things that we focused our attention on was establishing a um, sort of a, a template by which we can report back uh, the, the issues and concerns raised during, during the summit so that they, are, they do form very actionable items so that we can see a number of concrete um, advances before the next summit. And so we, we structured them around defining the problem specifying the recommendations, what are the tangible outcomes for each, each issue, who's the target audience, what's the timeline, and then what's the report back at the next AOS meeting. Uh, and I'll just go through a detailed example, only one. So for the example of private sector collaboration, what's the issue? Private sector involvement in Arctic observing currently considered a major gap. So recommendations for the next AOS World Ocean Council will lead an initiative to gather industry partners with academic input to formally raise the question of Arctic data sharing, coordination, and joint data collection programs. 
Recommendation two, then also before the next AOS, a subset of the group, World Ocean Council and AOS participants, identify successful case studies of industry data sharing, again, as examples. And then a recommendation number three, outreach to private sector for participation and support in the next AOS. So actually have partners come on board, show up at the meeting, and provide uh, funding to support the meeting. Perhaps we were uh, mentioned even uh, young researchers and young professionals in industry. Uh, target audience, World Ocean Council partners, including oil and gas, uh, heavy shipping, and tourism, which is rapidly merging in the Arctic. Uh, specific outcome, private sector committed partners in ob observing system, cooperation, uh, cooperative planning, implementation, and use. So the, the broad outcome is, is get the, the private sector on board. Time scale, several time scales, short term, concrete support and representation in the next summit in Helsinki, mid to long term expand beyond the WOC partners to include uh, more uh, private. <coughs> uh, and at the next AOS, uh, the, uh, in, uh, enact the short term uh, goals, private sector participation as co-organizers and contributing to the agenda, so actually showing up and then a bit of travel support. And then just to, to wrap up, I'll just touch back on some of the other main themes that we uh, were discussing. Uh, international ship-based coordination, so that's clearly a major gap, needs to be remedied. Um, and we also raised other issues such as improving uh, EEZ, uh, um, EEZ access to, to other countries. So sometimes it's, it's a little tricky to get into other countries uh, exclusive economic zones to do sampling work, and that, that should be uh, remedied. Uh, Global Earth Observing System of Systems, GEOS, uh, improve AOS representation, and, and UBAO is going to help us with uh, uh, some detailed commentary and suggestions. Data issues, access, and we've heard this a lot, but I also wanted to put data rescue back on the map, and we mentioned in our, our little <coughs> breakout, we got talking about uh, atmospheric reanalysis products, and a lot of people are using those as hindcast, to, uh, to build up uh, trends and so on. Well, uh, rescue data are a, a perfect vehicle for validating some of these, these uh, data sets, the, the reanalysis data sets. Um, and then linking operational observing programs to science and stakeholder information needs uh, global cryosphere watch. So better integrate end users in that uh, project and better tailor observations. And HIO or anyone in the group, any other details? I would just add to your, um, if you go back up, I know it's, it's World Ocean, uh, but mm -hmm. you should add mining to the industry group to, even if sure. it's not part of the UFC, mm -hmm. but definitely add mining to this. Yeah. Any other comments or, or questions or et cetera on any of the rapporteur or the group? Um, I, I was actually uh, just told to, that we want you to, do, to uh, bring your sticks back to the registration desk, so I'm sorry about that, but I was just told the contrary. I'm just the messenger. Uh, bring your USB sticks uh, to the registration desk, because I think some people want to work on them today and, and, and before uh, maybe summarizing issues tomorrow morning. Uh, I don't think there's any closing statements today. You're, uh, you're free. I know there's lots of side meetings again happening this evening in hockey and um, <laughs> for Canadians anyway. Um, and we reconvene tomorrow at 9 o'clock uh, right here. Thank you.